Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional Checking Team number 93, New Apple Corps. This is actually my team that I graduated from. Uh, so really cool to check in to see what this team is doing. To help me talk more about this robot, I have Ryan, Henry, and Mason. And I gotta tell you, I've been in first for 22 years. This is a team I started on. This might be the best robot this team has made. Uh, just watch the last couple matches. They are shooting cargo all over the field and sinking them. Great accuracy, uh, a great design, a mid-run uh, climb you got to check out the turret and the intake that goes into this. Let's find out more here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now, supported by Stryker Careers. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Competition season is here. Head on over to thebluelines.com to catch all the events each week. Don't forget to submit your clips of the week to discord.gg forward slash first updates now. Vote in the FRC Top 25 and play in our free fantasy pick'em. Catch fun shows live on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. So we're going to start out on this uh, robot course going through your intake. Uh, you know, we were talking beforehand, you said there's some uh, uh, kind of correlations between last year's intake they used going to this year's. Uh, so talk to me about that and also some changes maybe from your last event going into this event too. Yeah, absolutely. So last year we had a very similar intake for inf Infinite Recharge. Um, when this went down, Henry, if you could put it down, uh, it had more of a um, like full um, curve design here. And in our first competition, we would intake balls, and they would actually get stuck here. Sure. And we had no control. If we'd move around, they'd stay stuck. So we'd have to put it up and put it down, which would, you know, of course, take time off of our cycles. And then uh, we had all of these blue wheels here on the intake, and we, we realized that they don't actually touch this middle bar. So unfortunately, that's kind of useless. But uh, we put these mechanic wheels so they kind of uh, force it up in the middle. Henry, if you could put it up. Another one of the iterations that we had was that uh, from Duluth to uh, here in Milwaukee, we added this uh, piece of po uh, polycord. And what this does is it lets us have um, constant control of the ball anywhere in our uh, collator system. And the last competition, we had the polycord here on the sides, which left this massive space in the middle for uh, balls to not be controlled, uh, which, which led, a, led to us having to like move the um, you know robot back and forth and jostle it around and so that obviously just took time off our, off our cycles and that was a problem so like before you just had like a piece of polycarb here or that, yeah. and there was nothing okay yep. so really helps I mean watching your last couple of matches it seems like that's really solved a lot of your problems yeah uh, you've been having with that uh, and then is this tarp in here whole time this this to me is reminiscent of like older robots <laughs> you guys have had too yeah absolutely so this is actually new for this competition too Henry if you could put it down again um, our intake is very powerful, and it also um, intakes our balls at an upwards trajectory a little sure. bit. So in the last competition, sometimes, you know, one out of five times, we'd have the ball fly up through here, and, you know, it would bounce around, and sometimes it would fly out. So we wanted to, you know, work on that and see if that would make a difference, which it does. This, this thing is so nice. We love this. And then we also added these pieces here, and um, our intake, it's, it's pretty heavy. And so we wanted to kind of soften and dampen it a little bit and also take the load off of our solenoids over here. And then going back um, into the ball management a little bit more, we have these two wheels. And um, our first ball, it goes up and gets stuck kind of over here. And our color sensor will figure out what color it is. If it's the um, opposite um, alliance's ball, it'll shoot it up. And it'll shoot it at like a tenth of the RPM that we usually do. And it'll just kind of fall out. What happens if you intake the right color ball and then the wrong one after that? So that's interesting, actually. It'll try to shoot. It'll shoot the first ball, and then the second ball, it'll, it'll like be like, wait, what's happening here? And then it'll, it'll force it out. The oh, front. makes sense on there. Yeah. Yep. Um, but other than that, that's pretty much our intake system. So question on, on your uh, your indexing here. So you guys kind of have more of a traditional curve that we've seen. Uh, have you had to look into any issues in regards to like uh, a cargo jamming up in there or anything like that? Or do these wheels pretty much take care of what you need? Pretty much these wheels do a really good job. Um, they, they touch the ball pretty much everywhere and we really don't have any issues with them except for one, which is that um, as these wheels are spinning up, um, our feed speed into the shooter can drastically change our sure. launch trajectory. 
So that's something we're working on. Just recently, actually, we tried adding an encoder onto this motor because based on our battery voltage, that would change um, how far we would shoot. So that's something we're currently working on. But other than that, um, we're pretty happy with our system and it's working well. Well, appreciate that, Ryan. Let's go to Henry next. He's going to be talking about your uh, shooter. And you're about, obviously, a nice turret with that. Uh, this is a lot of uh, pretty decent chunk of weight for a flywheel that you have here. So I'd uh, love to hear more about your, your turret, what's gone into it, and uh, some decision between uh, using this type of uh, wheelbase as well. Yeah, absolutely. So from last year, we kind of tried to take it more to the theoretical and figure out how the ball is actually going to be shot. Um, and we knew, like, at, during kickoff that we wanted to be able to shoot from anywhere all the time. That was our goal. That was our motto. We kind of said that um, all around school all the time. And so what we thought we needed was an adjustable hood. So you'll see that here. Um, as well as a turret, which is kind of hard to move. But um, we have a 180 degree turret. And then we constantly track the target, trying to figure out uh, where the hub is. And we do that all with the limelight. Uh, as for shooting, like Ryan started to mention, feed speed is really important. And so we've tried to keep all of those variables pretty constant, um, along with these sensors, which makes the system a whole lot smarter. And so what, we're actually, or what we actually did to test the shooter and kind of get it to the performance that you're seeing right now is we shot from a ton of different locations and gathered a ton of data points, which takes a really, really, really long time. Sure. Um, but what that allowed us to do is kind of figure out the characteristics of the ball um, and as well as our shot. So we figured out that in the grand scheme of things, our RPM doesn't really matter that much, um, but our angle is super vital. And so what that allowed us to do is kind of take a really shallow shot so that we can try and prevent the ball from bouncing out. Um, from there, we just kind of aggregated all of that data and made a best fit line. So now when we're on the practice field, if anything goes wrong, we can change one data point and we'll have a completely different shooting algorithm with a completely different shot. And we can change that within like 20 minutes. So it's really great to have that versatility. I noticed uh, the tape line on your wheels here. Are you using like an encoder to track this or anything like that? Or what is uh, the purpose of that? Um, that was originally for testing purposes. So we actually use a digital tachometer um, to see that reflective tape. And that was just to verify that our encoders were working properly and that we were getting an accurate count for RPM. Let's wrap up your robot talking about your climber here. Uh, and uh, you guys have gone uh, with the mid rung on that. Uh, so the question I ask teams who, who are doing mid rung is, where's kind of your, uh, your cost analysis in regards to how, many, how much cargo you can shoot versus like a mid-rung climb instead of going like traversal or something like that. Uh, and then I'd just love to hear about the general concept of your climber as well. So at the beginning of this year with the scope that we designed, um, we very much wanted to shoot like as much as we can, like Henry said, shoot from anywhere all the time. Um, our climber is actually also something like our intake from last year. Our, last year was a two stage this year. We just do the one moving stage. Sure. Um, and then we added some bearings in to help make it even smoother. But it's pretty much last year's climber just put on this robot. Um, but the reason that we only did a mid-rung climb was so that we could shoot more and focus more on that shooter aspect than cramming in a traversal climber with a shooter and everything. I'm actually convinced the meta of this game is to not do traversal at some point, and then teams are just going to figure out a way to like, hey, six points for a mid or four points for a low, I can make up that time in just shooting cargo out there. So, uh, you know, for you guys, uh, I'm really curious to see if you're going to be able to get to that level because you're, you're getting close in the matches I've seen. So can't wait to see more about that. Well, 93, thanks a lot for taking the time. Uh, it's always great checking with my old team for that uh, for when I was in high school. And your team is continually making great robots. It's great to see it continue throughout the year. So good luck here at the Wisconsin Regional. Of course, I uh, hope to see you uh, qualify for the World Championships as well, too. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks to Stryker Careers for their support in this video. Stryker's commitment to medical device technology innovation has made it a top career destination for those in FIRST. FIRST alumni and mentors are given top priority in their internship and career applications. Come create the next medical innovation that saves lives at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.